I was six when this happened, and it's still clear as day in my mind. I was sleeping with my mom, dad, and sister. We had this long body mirror in front of the bed. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I stared at the mirror. And I can't stress enough how real this was, but a lady came out of the damn mirror, slowly. I'm getting goosebumps writing about this. I couldn't see her face because it was covered with long hair and she was wearing a white dress, really similar to the ring, but I haven't watched it at the time. And she was glowing. The reason why I still remember it was because she was literally so bright. She didn't emit any light to her surroundings, but it was on her, like an aura. She slowly looked, walked from one end of the room and to the other, just going through the wall. I didn't scream, but I just hid in my blankets. I don't know why I didn't try to wake anyone up, but when morning came, I told my family and they believed me. Paranormal shit isn't an uncommon thing in our house, but that's the most memorable of my encounters. Today, I'll say that I don't believe in ghosts because I haven't seen one like that since. I only see movement from the corners of my eyes or black figures I'd think was a member of my family, but it just wasn't. But I don't really take that much into much deeper thought. So I'm writing here because I just can't let this go. It's not exactly frightening, just so bizarre that I almost have myself convinced that my subconscious has irreversibly altered my memory of the event. I really just want to know if something similar has happened to anyone else. I, 44 male, once lived in an apartment complex on a relatively busy street. I was 10 and very introverted. Mom would make me play outside from time to time, just so I would have some exercise. Generally, I'd enjoy riding my bike, but I was never so motivated to do it. One reason I avoided going outside was the neighborhood bully. He was bigger than I, with red hair. I was an easy target since I always played alone. No idea what his name or age was at the time. So on the day of the event, I was riding carefully down the sidewalk since the street was fairly busy. Quite caught up in the thoughts of an introverted 10 year old boy, I didn't notice the bully approaching from the lawn of a building of apartment units to my right, the street to my left. I was going slowly, lost in my thoughts, and he entered my direct field of vision just as I was closing in on a narrowed bit of sidewalk. At this part of the sidewalk, some classical municipal shenanigans had occurred, and there was a fire hydrant not three feet from a 10 foot diameter telephone pole with a steel guy wire. So of course, I panicked a bit when I saw how close Mr. Bully was and naturally turned my wheel away from him to the left. I'm sure this was the goal so that I would hit the fire hydrant or the pole and fall off my bike, ripe for a sound thrashing while prone. Then, the unexpected happened. With my forward momentum, I had already reached the fire hydrant. My front wheel was definitely at least six feet beyond the leading edges of it. Yet when I turned away from the bully, I went into the streets. I was fully in the street when I suddenly stopped and turned my head back, ready to complain about his attempt. But when I saw his face, I quickly lost my voice. He was shocked. I looked back again at where I had left the sidewalk and put it together deliberately. I'm sure my brow was furrowed when I glanced back at him again. The question in my eyes, not verbalized. Had my bike just passed completely through that very solid fire hydrant. He turned and scurried away. Then I realized I was still on the streets. Again, bizarrely, no cars had passed or even been heard by me during this entire event. Fully weirded out, I got myself back on the sidewalk and went home. So my brain tells me this happened, but now it's so long in the past and I've ruminated on it for so long. Has my imagination embellished this? Or is it some sort of paranormal guardian angel event? Has anyone seen something similar? The 
This happened in West Texas about a year ago. Last year, there was a comet that was visible. I'm sure most of those in the US know what I'm talking about. I was a sophomore in high school when this happened, so I'm still probably the same maturity. But anyways, I wanted to go see the comet. My family, being my mom, stepdad and two brothers at the time, and I live work on a farm. It's all cotton, corn and milo. So with this being a rural farming community, we were almost out in the sticks. Certainly a good drive from town. With the lack of city lights, we had the perfect view to see the comet. We would have all gone, but I stayed back with my brothers because they were three and one. And it was about 10.30, so if they woke up by chance, someone had to be home. To make a long story short, we go to the field, take out the binoculars, and have a good time. When we got home, I trade with my mom and I go to view. We were gone for about 20 minutes, so nothing unnatural. But as we were driving to a field we call the canal, we saw this huge fireball in the sky. It hovered in a constant state, but it would sometimes move closer than back away. I'm not sure how to explain it, but that it stayed the same size? Like, I could visibly tell it came closer than backed off, but it was the same size. Also described it similar to the sun. That it stayed for about five minutes, then just disappeared. Like, blink, gone. With this being a rural farming community, there were no oil fields here. Strictly cotton, as it was the season. While we can see the city lights from where we live, it was the opposite direction. The road goes north and south, and the fireball was due east, the city being west. We all together spent about half an hour researching. I googled fireball in sky. My stepdad looked up anything local in the news, like an explosion or something. And my mom checked Facebook, but no one else had seen it. Or at least, there were no other posts about it. We still bring it up now and then, but as far as we know, nothing ever came of it. If anyone wants to do some digging, I'll PM the area this happened in. But yeah, as far as I know, we have no answer to what this could be. My history teacher swears to God he saw a UFO around that time, within the week. But I'm not saying it was or wasn't a UFO because I don't know myself. The only thing I've ever found similar was when I was watching some paranormal TV show about UFOs and they mentioned a bright fireball in the sky. But yeah, that's it. When I was a kid, our first house sat on the last public land before Penhurst State School and Hospital here in southeastern Pennsylvania. As I grew up, the past of Penhurst always interested me, and that started my love of everything paranormal. My wife and I met when we were teens and have been together for more than 20 years now. One night, just after we'd met, we were driving around looking for a place to park and make out as kids did. It was a late night in winter and it just snowed. We were driving through a small section of woods near our hometown. I made a slight right turn to go up a hill, hit a patch of snow and ice and slid onto the shoulder of the road. The car wouldn't move. I spun the tires a few times and dug out my mom's cell phone to call my dad after an internal debate as to who would be less pissed off. He answered and I explained the situation. He said to be on the way. I tried everything I knew how to do, turning tires, having my wife press the gas while I pushed, nothing worked. I remember sitting in the car with the windows down in the silence of the night. A dog started barking and it sounded way too big and way too close. There was a house in the distance and we started freaking out with all kinds of imagined threats. I remember being truly scared. Suddenly, an engine sounded in the distance. I looked in the rear view mirror and five or six snowmobiles pulled up behind us. I got out of the car and one of the riders walked up to me. He didn't take off his helmet or raise his visor. He asked if we needed help. I said yes. He and a few others pushed the car as I worked the gas and they were able to get it back on the road. I thanked them. They hopped back on the snowmobiles and continued on their way. 
I spun the car in a tight circle and we made our way down the hill. As we turned to go home, I stopped the car under a street light. The snow was fresh and untouched. I got out and walked around for a moment. I had just watched a crew of snowmobiles shoot down that road, listen to their engines and fade away in the night. There were no tracks, no sign of anything besides us out there. It is one event that I still remember to this day. It's not as dark or freaky as things can be, but it was a cool experience and one I'll tell my kids about when they get old enough to understand. Our house was a row home built in the early 1970s. My wife and I moved in in 2007. The first real incidents that raised some concern happened before our children were born. We'd left the house to return to find a stack of papers that had been sitting on my office desk, now laid out on the floor in a row in sequential order. No one was home while we were out. This continued and escalated from seeing things out of the corner of our eyes to hearing voices. One night I woke to a whisper of, don't wake daddy, in the voice of a little girl. It sounded like she was standing next to our bed. I looked around the room to find nothing. Our son at the time was in his room asleep. Years have passed with every now and then activity that seemed to be a reminder of, hey, I'm still here. This changed Monday night. Our son tearfully told us that he hears things in his room and they speak to him. He's old enough to be sure enough of this that it caused a large outpouring of emotion. My wife and I decided to pray for him. She went upstairs for a minute and when she was up there, he looked at me and said, something is going to fall. I didn't think anything of it. We prayed for him and after we finished, things were quiet. About a minute passed and from next door, two loud bangs sounded in a manner like something had fallen, loud enough that we both jumped. Our eyes met and we didn't say anything. Tonight, we were riding in the car. I asked him how he knew something was going to sound that way last night. He said he'd had an impression. I asked if he gets impressions often. He said he does. My wife was working at the time and I asked him how her work was going and if he felt anything about it. He said she'd cut herself on her left hand. My wife just arrived home from work and told me that she had indeed cut herself on her left index finger while at work. Before putting my son to bed, tonight I was standing in our bedroom in thought about the events of yesterday, when I saw a shadow pass through the hallway, large enough that it blocked the light that hangs in the middle of the hallway outside the door. Later, praying for my son again, I felt a cold air mass centered around my left arm. I checked his windows and all was shut and locked. It's a cold night where we are, but I could not find the source of the air mass since around my arm. We're at a loss. I've experienced more things the last two days that I can't explain than I've ever experienced in my life. My wife's grandmother was sensitive to the spirit world, so maybe something passed down to our son? Shouldn't we get our house blessed? We haven't attended our church since lockdowns, and I'm hesitant to reach out to the pastor considering the holiday week here in the US. The tension here is palpable, as we've decided to try our best to protect our family. Hopefully, it works. So to provide a quick background, our house has always had weird vibes to it. My boys have both claimed to have experienced things, and my wife has seen things as well. Last night, I'm putting down our youngest. A little rocking chair, mine from when I was a toddler, was seated against his wall. I was sitting on the floor in front of it. The room was dark, except for a nightlight. After he was sleeping, I left the room shut the door and walked downstairs to the kitchen. About a minute or two later, 
Definitely less than five minutes. I heard a bang from above me where his room was located. My wife, who was upstairs at the time, texted me asking what that was. I said I had no idea. Our son ran out of the room and found my wife terrified. The small rocking chair was in the middle of the floor upside down. It had moved somehow about five feet and flipped forward. I know he was sleeping as I checked before I left the room and the movement sound happened within a five minute span. My wife was on the same floor of the house and would have told me if she was involved somehow or his brother had somehow entered the room. His brother was sleeping at the time as well. We eventually calmed him down and got him back to sleep. It was crazy, to say the least. This happened several months ago. My wife and I have an 18 month old daughter. She's our first baby besides a miscarriage. Our daughter was somewhere around a year old. She was or is as an age with lots of toys around the house. We know them all and the sounds they make multiple times a day. I say this because of a very strange occurrence. One day, my wife and I were sitting on the couch with our little girl nursing. The TV wasn't on, but my wife had a video playing quietly on her phone. I got up to go to another room and as I'm crossing the room, I hear a child clearly giggling in between me and my wife. I instantly turned around and saw my wife staring at me with big eyes. I asked her if maybe I misheard where it came from and it was our daughter or my wife's phone. She said no, she heard it in front of her as well. She said it couldn't have been our daughter because she had been 100% latched on and nursing the whole time. We double checked the video to make sure it wasn't on there, but there were zero children or laughter in the video. I checked if there was some weird toy on the ground that maybe I had nudged. Nope. And the sound didn't sound like it came from any of those sources. It was clearly a voice in the room. We didn't feel bad though and thought maybe it was either our miscarriage, a child that has yet to join our family, or some spirit of a child that is enjoying all the toys in the house. So we were cool with it. But make no mistake, something was in there with us. Another night, about a month later, we were in bed quietly talking and we distinctly heard a chair from our dining room table moving. It makes a distinct sound. We don't live in a place that creaks, so it's normally very quiet. We both looked at each other and knew the other heard it too. Again, we didn't get a bad vibe. We decided a friendly spirit of a child is just having fun in our place. This house was haunted and I know it. It was said that the owner before died in the house. Some of the neighbors said by suicide, not confirmed. I would always feel uneasy when I was alone. You would hear footsteps like someone wearing high heels or a figure in the corner of your eye. I do remember sleeping in the living room and waking up at 2 a.m. like the feeling of being watched. Then, while I was under the covers, I would hear light footsteps coming towards and stopping above me. Then I would ever so slightly hear my name right next to my ear. I would get a lot of night terrors and sleep paralysis. I remember once I opened my eyes and I couldn't move or talk. I remember looking over and seeing my brother watching TV. I was trying to get his attention, but I couldn't. I guess he heard me murmuring and saw that my eyes were open. He started calling my name and I started praying and a few seconds later, I could start talking and moving. I asked him if he saw what happened. He said, yeah, a dead person was on top of you. A chill went down my spine. That house was bulldozed and doesn't exist anymore. If you want to know about other things that happened in that house, let me know. I used to work at this old plant building door frames and doors when I was 18. 
It was probably built in the early 1900s and was falling apart in some places. I worked from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. My job was to build the frames and scrap whatever wood I didn't need. I would usually keep the scrap in a bag until the end of the night and then go throw it in a huge dumpster. My first few days, I felt unsettled because the dumpster was literally in the pitch black outside. This plant was in the middle of nowhere with no lights outside. Eventually, I got used to it. The bathroom was also a good five minutes away by walking from my workstation. One night, I needed to use the restroom and made my way over there. And while I almost reached the bathroom, I heard a very high-pitched yell from behind me. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and I looked behind me to see something white turning the corner where my work area is. And I ignored it, thinking it was the security guard. I used the bathroom and come out and go back to work. I asked my lead man if he heard a scream and if anyone came down here. He gives me a strange stare and says no. When it's time for break, he calls me over and tells me to sit down at the table with him. It was around midnight at this point. He tells me not to get scared, but that this place has a strange vibe to it. That people claim to see and hear things all the time. Apparently, a little girl in the 1930s died in an accident there, and that people claim to see her and a black dog. Nobody knows what the black dog is there for. There is only one guy that says he saw the dog, but the dog disappeared when it turned into a corner. When I quit, I was so happy because that place gave me the creeps. I was born in the USA, but I used to visit Mexico often pre-COVID. Probably twice a year as a kid and once a year when I started living on my own. This was my first experience when I went. I was around nine. If you're not aware, some places in Mexico are enchanted or plain out haunted. I was staying with my uncle at the time in the country. Country meaning a lot of houses do not have electricity and the nights can get pitch black. Even though my life was padded in the US, it was still neat to see how my uncle lived. My mom and siblings came, but I chose to stay with my uncles that time because I was close to them. They owned a farm that was in the middle of nowhere. They had electricity, but would try not to use it. They had a barn with a huge cornfield. I remember this day like it was yesterday. I helped my uncle to do chores around the farm feed the animals mainly while he did the heavier work. We went inside before sundown, ate and went to bed. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and checking my wristwatch. It was almost 3 a.m. I don't know what woke me up, but I looked around and saw a shadow figure by the window looking out. Now I'm shitting bricks and I quietly call out to my uncle. We were sleeping in the same room. He quickly shushed. I stopped talking and it went eerily quiet, not a bug or bird making a noise. That's when I heard it. It sounded like a baby crying, but it sounded very far away. It gave me the chills. He went to get his brother, my other uncle. He told me to come on and grabbed his shotgun and his dog. Told me to hold a flashlight and to hold his dog's leash. And we went outside to see where the crying was coming from. We waited and we heard the crying coming from the cornfield. I looked at my uncles and they both looked scared. They decided to go investigate and brought me along. I was terrified the farther we went into that cornfield. They originally thought it was a fox or coyote, but they said that they know that they sound like, and they said this sounded like a human child. Now we were hearing the crying constantly Every time we went farther in, the crying would sound farther and farther in. This field was huge, so we were maybe a quarter mile in, and my older uncle said he felt something in his gut, that something was wrong, and we needed to get out of here immediately. He said to run with the dog, and the dog will lead you home, but to shine the flashlights behind you. Then they could follow. As soon as I took off the run, the crying got super loud and sounded so close. I ran and ran and I reached the farm pretty fast. 
My uncles did too, and we got inside and boarded up the house. They stayed up till sunrise. I asked them, what was that? My older uncle stammered and said he didn't know, but something was trying to lure us in there. My family decided to take a vacation in a zone near the coast in a big cottage. We came there with some friends to spend the weekend and we were without any houses around and four or five kilometers away from the nearest town. When we first arrived and entered the house, I immediately felt a strange sensation from it. I thought it could be suggestion of being in a place that I didn't know, so I just ignored it. But then the night came, everything started to get strange. I slept in the same room as my sister, but she quickly fell asleep, so she didn't realize what was happening. When I was finally getting to sleep, I suddenly heard three hard knocks on the door, so I instantly get up from the bed and came near the door to see what was happening. I opened the door and there was nothing behind. I thought it could be our friends, so I sent them a text message saying that they should stop joking because we were trying to sleep. Anyways. I felt like they wouldn't stop there, so I waited close to the door until I heard another knock and tried to catch them in the act. And then I received a text message from one of my friends saying that they were in the upper room trying to sleep too, so they don't know what I was talking about. Anyways, I decided to stay near the door just in case they were lying, and suddenly another violent knock sounds again, so I immediately opened the door just to see that there was nothing there neither my friends nor anything else. In that moment, I knew something was happening in that house. I tried to sleep, but my head was trying to understand what was happening. The next day, I talked about this to my parents, and they said we could move to another room in the upper floor, but didn't really believe me. I was 14 at the time, so they just thought it was my imagination. Then the night came again, and I was ready. I thought that if something happened again, I'll wake up my sister so she can confirm that later. The hours passed and I was in the bed with a little light turned on. Then suddenly I started to hear strong hits, but this time they didn't come from the door. It came from the wardrobe next to us. So I immediately woke up my sister and she was terrified. The hits didn't stop and the violence of them was so hard that the door from the wardrobe was moving, like something was trying to get out of there. I said that I would try to open it to see what was trapped inside and my sister was begging me not to because she was absolutely in shock. But anyways, I open it and in the same moment the sound stopped, making the room come back to complete silence. She decided to wake up our parents because she was afraid that this thing that was there would harm us somehow. It's an awful situation and we never came back to that house again. To paint the picture, I was probably 18 or 19 years old at the time, living in my parents' house. They have a modest home built in 1975 on a quaint suburban street in a somewhat historical small town of America in western New York State. I grew up there. My bedroom where I slept was on the second floor, along with all the other bedrooms of the house. Before going to sleep that night, I made my bed from freshly cleaned and dried sheets from the laundry. I'm somewhat particular, so I make it to point to fold and tuck everything in nicely, like in a hotel. I remember the night as just a routine evening, probably a weeknight, sometime in winter, I think. I went to bed at a sensible hour, 10-ish perhaps. I wasn't ill, nor ate anything out of the ordinary as I recall. Don't believe I watched anything overly concerning or scary on TV that evening. I actually felt generally pretty content that night, and was longing for a solid night's rest. I slept in a twin bed. It was against the wall to my left. The head of the bed was against the adjacent wall, where there was a window over my head. The window was shut closed as it was cold out. I had blinds on the window and they were closed. There was a nightstand to the right of my bed with a small lamp and digital clock on it. Outside of that, it was pitch black room and my door was closed. 
Now for the crazy part. Here goes. As I slept in my bed sound asleep, I was jarred awoke by the feeling of my comforter and sheets being tugged off my bed. I was sleeping on my left side facing the wall when this occurred. It started with small rhythmic tugs pulling the blankets away from my body to the right of the bed, away from the wall side. I didn't move my body at all while this was happening and remained completely still. Oddly, at the moment I didn't feel particularly scared so much, but more so thought to myself how incredibly strange this was. Honestly, I was just in awe. I immediately thought I must be sleepwalking. Well, obviously not walking, but half asleep, half awake. And was making this whole thing up in my mind. This may sound weird, but I felt the need to check. So I pinched my cheeks with my hands and wiggled my feet just so I could acknowledge to myself it was indeed not me or my extremities. And this tugging was still occurring. I remember noting that I heard no sounds of breathing, moaning or growling, as I had a hunch in the moment that perhaps our family dog somehow got trapped in the room and was trying to wake me up because she had to go out. At this point in time, several seconds had transpired and the tugging was becoming more and more deliberate and stronger. I know for a fact I'm wide awake and it isn't me causing this. The tugging was so violent, I guess you could say, that it is pulling my tucked in sheets from under out the edges of the bed. After about a solid 30 seconds of this, it stopped completely. There I sat in a completely pitch back room in silence on my left side, with a heavy comforter and sheets pulled off my bed and no longer on top of me. I didn't move for like 10 or 15 seconds. Then I finally mustered the courage to quickly turn to my right and flip on the lamp. Boom, nothing. No dog, door closed, window closed. I was left uncovered. My blankets and sheets were strewn halfway across the room with just a corner of the sheets still hanging onto the bed. I checked under my bed for any sign of animal activity. At this point, my mind was going pretty wild with possibilities. Maybe a wild animal got in or something. Empty. I checked outside my room and found my parents asleep with their door closed. I checked the clock. It was around midnight. I sat up in my bed for like an hour, rocking back and forth, contemplating what I had just experienced and what could have caused this. I had no ideas. I wondered if I should have awoken my parents but I just thought my dad would be rolling his eyes and tell me to go back to bed, lol. Weirdly, I felt kind of excited to have been a part of something like that. And I just remember feeling I experienced something otherworldly, ghostly perhaps. To conclude, it was the single most unusual occurrence of my life. My parents live in the same house as of today. Whereas I remember small oddities growing up there, I never experienced, nor they or my brother, anything like that before then or since then i don't believe the house ever had a death in it before but i could be wrong the last bit of info i will mention is the land in which the housing developed was built on was excavated for native american iroquois artifacts several times and from my understanding it may have been a burial ground at one point hundreds of years ago This happened to me when I was in middle school. I decided to join a peer church group in the hopes that I would make some friends. Instead of finding friends forever, I had experiences so frightening, I avoid both churches and church groups. Backstory. There was a church in the next town over that had a reputation for being haunted. My best friend told me stories about other people who had seen a squat shadowy creature running around the church and jumping through closed doors. Coincidentally, this was the same church the peer group belonged to. It was a little nerve wracking for me to hear since I was going to be going to that church for a sleepover in three days time. Ultimately, I decided that I would be cautious, armed with this information and still go to the sleepover. This would be one of two terrifying experiences I would have there. Hide and go seek. Saturday comes and I ride out with the other kids that lived in town to this church. 
we had two chaperones, one young man and one young woman, which would be caring for us while we were there. They both sported casual attire, tennis shoes, jeans and t-shirt. This is important for what follows. After all of us had stowed our sleeping bags and belongings in the main hall, we gathered in a common area with a kitchenette attached by a hallway that led to the main hall of the church. After a little discussion, the chaperones decided to play a game of hide and seek inside the church complex. As I had already chosen my hiding place, I waited until everyone had scrambled off to find places to hide before I went to mine. In this common area, there were a set of two pews sitting against the back wall of the room. One of them had a piece of wide plywood leaning against it. To me, it was a perfect hiding place. I crawled underneath the pew with the plywood leaning against it and lined my back up with the back of the pew to keep from being seen from above. The plywood was wide enough that most of my body was hidden from view. However, I could still see the rest of the room and the kitchenette un unimpeded. After about five minutes, the whole church fell silent and then slowly, it got really quiet. I couldn't even hear the running refrigerator in the kitchenette anymore. I was so scared I held my breath, listening to the pregnant silence. Not long after, I saw from my hiding place a pair of shiny black cowboy boots silently walking from the hallway that led to the main church hall, barely breathing. I watched intently as the boots walked into the middle of the room, stop and turn in the direction I was hiding. The boots walked right up to where I was and whoever or whatever it was, grabbed the plywood and leant, lean it back from the pew. The shadow of a slim head darkened to the plywood as whoever it was peered down towards me. Abruptly, the shadow of the head turned back towards the hall, then back down at me before putting the plywood slowly back in place. Then the boots turned and walked away, disappeared into the side wall. Shortly after, everyone including the chaperones came back into the common area looking for me. Startling the group, I emerged from my hiding place. I'm here, I said, faking a smile. I couldn't tell them what I saw. I knew in my heart they wouldn't believe me. As the chaperones discussed what to do next, I took the time to look down at their feet. Both of them were only wearing tennis shoes. I spent a sleepless night listening to the hard thump of leathery creak of cowboy boots walking back and forth in between the sleeping children and even right past me as I hid in my sleeping bag. When the light of dawn came pouring in from the stained glass window, I jumped out of my sleeping bag and packed everything up as fast as I could, glad to be gone. Preacher. A few weeks had passed since the night of the black boots. I had decided not to leave the peer church group, figuring I would be safe if I didn't go to any other sleepovers at the church. I was mistaken. One day, I was invited to stay the night at the group leader's house and go the next day with her and her family to the Sunday sermon at the church. Despite some apprehension, I accepted the invite. After a wonderful Saturday night of country fried pork and gravy and a moonlight ride on horseback, Sunday morning arrived. It was time to go to church. The two kids as well as myself were herded into the main hall and into a row of pews close to the days where the preacher would be delivering his sermon. All three of us kids, still sleeping from the previous night, were quick to fall asleep to the sound of the preacher's almost monotone voice. As soon as the sermon was over and he stepped down to shake hands with the various parishioners, I was suddenly awake. Instinctively, I looked around until my eyes fell on the preacher. Something was wrong with, with him, just plain wrong. I ducked into the crowd, aiming for the back of the church. When I looked back halfway to the other side of the room, I realized that he was following me with each hand he shook his milky white eyes like that of a corpse staring at me. Finally, I had made it to the back pews by the wall, scrambling underneath one and huddling behind it. I peered carefully over the top of the pew. He was still creeping closer and closer, his wrinkled face now being a wide, triumphant smile. He knew I was trapped. Just as he thought the crowd of parishioners and 
was heading straight at me. A tall man with short brown hair, wearing blue jeans and a white shirt segmented by blue lines, stands directly in front of where I'm going. Peering from the edge of his blue jeans, I watched as a smile fell from the preacher's lips as he looked his dead eyes with the man. An agonizing moment passed as they regarded each other before they carefully shook hands. With one more glance down at me, the preacher turned to his right, walked away and back into the crowd. As I breathed a sigh of relief, the man in jeans leaned over and quietly told me, get out of here and never come back. Then he also turned in the same direction and disappeared too into the crowd. I ran outside as fast as I could, breathing hard from fear. I waited as far away as I could from the church for the peer group leader and her family to come out and take me home. The next day, I quit the group. Since that day, I have never set foot in that, nor any other church alone.